are big problems, but you can also go towards the smaller problems. But nuclear is an option, has to be an option. We need to make sure that the drivers are there and people are informed that there can be solutions that are not necessarily massive, big problems, but maybe look at it in a different way and complement the rest of it that's going on. So I'm just saying there's room to go different directions than how we have been thinking of in the past. So, so when we talk about nuclear energy, um, I definitely agree with the, with the cleanliness of that and the safety aspects, but then there's the other aspect of uh, nuclear fusion. There's a, an international project, ITER, that is actually being built right now in, the southern, in southern France in Cadarache. And the problem is that politics get involved. The, the Congress keeps funding and defunding, and the U.S. keeps going in and pulling out. Uh, nuclear fusion has always been, the joke was that it is 30 years uh, in the future, and always 30 years in the future, but now it's actually becoming to a point where uh, it could be a viable source of energy that, it, that does not create um, nuclear waste. What about the LED, uh, Tesla car LEDs, and Toyota coming out with a car run by water? Hydrogen. Hydrogen fuel. Yeah, they, they right. Well, let me comment on electric cars. I, I think electric cars are great mm -hmm. if they're charged with renewable energy. But if you're using coal to generate electricity, you, what are you doing? You burn the coal, produce the steam, drive turbine generators, and then that electricity goes to a charging station, and that electricity from the charging station goes into a battery, and then the battery goes into a motor. So all of these transfer points, you have losses. Uh, if you're using coal to generate the electricity for a Tesla car, you're better off just using gasoline, <laughs> is my thought. If we can go to renewable energy for charging these cars, yeah, you know, that's what the about, way to go. What about the hydrogen car that Toyota is going to make, which will be fueled by... Yeah, that, those are fuel cells. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's great, but it's, it's a matter of... Uh, fueling stations, uh, it, it, we're a long way from that. But and, I, and storage. I yeah, storage, storage of, the, of the fuel. But I, I want to make a comment Just here. a quick one. Uh, hydrogen is only a storage medium. It's not a primary fuel. Um, it's like a battery. You, you create, you, you, you generate hydrogen from some other process. Uh, and uh, that's one aspect. The other aspect I was just going to say, my concept was to have energy farms uh, where you would have multiple energy sources in a rural area that would generate electricity, whether it be biofuel, solar, wind, and even uh, a, a, a wood pellet a generator and so forth, and that would uh, do that. But uh, you wanted to talk Yeah, so I worked on this a little bit. I did develop hydrogen, portable hydrogen systems for a company called Hyradics. So essentially, again, the idea is hydrogen today is mega hydrogen, right? Come from big plants. Transportation issues, storage issues come in. But can you make hydrogen when it's needed uh, on a small scale? So we had a company event. Essentially, yes, coming from coal is bad, which can come from natural gas, which is cleaner. Come from water, you can do electrolysis and that can efficiently trap conversion, you can do it. The key here is, I think, scale, right? But the world, Everything we do this is what the problem with Nobel laureate, uh, dynamite guy, great author Nobel. What was his problem? He created something in the world, pulled it in a different direction. And going back to what George said in the earlier slides, it's about the world needing, the girl's growing, right? The population is growing. We can't really address that. So, what we need to do is to curtail the demand, right? So, all of these problems we're talking about, first of all, the demand can be curtailed to a point where the, where the consumption pull is not heavy then small amounts of hydrogen can be put in place. If you want high amounts of hydrogen, high drawn battery, high drawn fuels, that's where the problem is coming. So I think a compendium of all of these technologies that you talked about, being solved, all can solve problems, but the intensity is small. Yeah. Please. We had a couple of questions back there just for a um, Yeah, one uh, I have a question for you yes, about um, impressive those villages, the water container. Uh, that's the drinking water yes, container. Yes, water container. Have you done it? Have you started doing No, I have not done it, okay. but I'm just saying it can be improved. Yeah, yeah but you have a cost analysis, how much it costs? Uh, I'm not. The, these are the things we need to know because I'm quite interested. And also putting the solar panels, 
where do you get the panels? Mm -hmm. If you get from here, this country is very expensive. And uh, India, any company providing those panels? Yes, yes. They, they all, all those are there. Okay, I need yeah. all this information, particularly your drinking water solar content, which I'm, is a very. We'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. Okay. Um, come to the back. Yeah, mine is, I, I mean, a lot of this stuff is above my head. So as a lay person, I'm sort of asking this question. Can you say your name also? Karamjit Kaur. And um, there was one pre, uh, slide that you had where um, this Italian um, person was actually extracting moisture from the air and then creating drinking water. My question was, that might be a solution, but when we're talking about scalability, and let's say this goes on sort of a larger scale, <laughs> Does that actually have a negative impact ultimately if you're sucking moisture out of the air? I'm yeah, it, it, so the, that's the key about the scale, right? We're not talking about taking water out of there. It's overnight water that condenses on the grass and the dew, so you're mm -hmm. going to capture it for the people. That's all. Uh, but there are other solutions. I'm not saying they're the, they're the one fix for all. The watershed okay. management, which Lee is talking about, those are big things. You know, water's coming on, the world has created the rain, but you're not capturing it efficiently. Right. Mm -hmm. There needs to be filtration systems, there need to be cleanups. But as a combination of these things, it's mm -hmm. solvable. And different solutions are to different pockets. Okay. I believe that's really doable. It's about spinning rayon in a configuration, uh, rayon fibers, polyester fibers in a configuration that collects water. And we can improve it by using chilling and so on. Okay. There are days in summer uh, with water. We would love that to be What is the cost comparison between plastic water and the pepper? Oh, cost comparison. I uh, haven't. I was looking at the website. I wrote to them a couple of times. Uh, the website is box water is better. Is, it, uh, is it lined and with something for box water? Uh, mostly, it's ninety-seven percent paper, but there is there usually most probably is some form of of coating, coating that's done. all cartons, um, you know, uh, that uh, are coated. But it certainly would be much less in terms of uh, waste and toxic pollution than uh, plastic bottles would be. They're getting uh, cans also now. They started giving cans. Yeah. They're giving cans also water in the cans. I yeah. had in the airline. I was which cans? Alum Aluminum yeah. can. Yeah. They're putting water in that one. Yeah. Another yeah. negative yeah. of plastic yeah. bottles yeah. is the you need twice. The, con the volume of a bottle in water to make the bottle. So if you have a 12 ounce bottle, yeah. plastic bottle, it consumes, if you drink 12 ounces, it took 24 ounces just to make the bottle. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're consuming three times as much as you think you are. So that's the worst thing about, besides the pollution and, and so on. Uh, first of all, I just want to say all the lectures were just so fascinating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just so wonderful. Uh, these are real innovations, uh, real ideas. And of course, we don't have a lot of time, so I can't uh, ask a lot of questions. But I just wanted to say that aviation industry should be so interested sure. in your ideas because I have talked to them, and they really feel pressure that they have to do something about it. They contribute 3% of the global emissions. And uh, Methi, that was wonderful, <laughs> uh, growing. But my question really to Dr. Jarl Nass is just uh, you said three technologies. The first one you said had to stop. The second one, uh, where you have this like a truck, a <coughs> truck. What's the status of this? Is it somewhere in the field? Is it happening? Uh, what's the status of that? Because that looks very yeah. Uh, very uh, there, uh, real quick, the agro-power technology was originally based on fluidized bed technology. Uh, there were some technical problems uh, in making it work, um, and AgriPower identified another combustion technology that has been demonstrated to work. They have bought that company, and there are currently 30 units, uh, 30 systems in operation, providing only thermal energy, either for hot water, hot air, uh, used in industry. Uh, there's a unit in a hospital, used wood waste, and provides hot water to the hospital 24-7. Another system operates for nine months a year, providing uh, water for schools. So it's being used primarily uh, on the East Coast because the company, uh, the manufacturers of the system is in Pennsylvania. Uh, they haven't yet uh, 
installed one to produce electricity. So it's just a matter of adding an ORC.